Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. The government of St. Lucia continues to build capacity in the fight against money laundering. The tourist town of Sufria comes alive with the new Hummingbird Beach Park. Plans are afoot for the redevelopment of the William Peter Boulevard. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The fourth round of the mutual evaluation process has begun as St. Lucia seeks to determine whether it has done enough to achieve a favorable outcome in its compliance in the fight against money laundering, terrorist financing, and financing of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. St. Lucia recently submitted to the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, the CFATF, the Technical Compliance Questionnaire, and by May, submissions will be made on St. Lucia's level of effectiveness. A standards training workshop began on Monday and is geared towards enhancing the capacity of the public sector to deal with the 40 recommendations made by the CFATF. The standards which you will be exposed to over the course of this training forms the bedrock upon which the country will be assessed. Therefore, an in-depth understanding and grasp of the concepts will aid in the preparation and execution of your functions not only for this evaluation, but for, but for future evaluations as well. Rest assured, the government of St. Lucia remains resolute in its support in the fight against money laundering, terrorist financing, and countering the financing of weapons of mass destruction. We recognize the tremendous significance of the mutual evaluation process and the impact to the country and stand ready to continue providing the requisite support. This round of evaluation will culminate with an on-site visit by the CFATF assessors from September 16 to 27, 2019, after which the mutual evaluation report will be drafted. During the upcoming on-site in September, the focus of the assessment team, which will be led by Mr. Jefferson Clark as mission leader, and supported by Ms. Joanne Hamid, coalition leader, both of whom, both of those are here with us today. The focus will be now on the effective implementation and assessing how well St. Lucia actually implementing these FATF recommendations. So therefore, we are hoping the standards training will be a critical building block in you understanding what are the recommendations you are expected to effectively implement. The training is being funded through the 11th EDF program of the European Union. Residents of Soufre and visitors to the tourist town have a new playground with the opening of the Hummingbird Beach Park. An official ceremony was held on Friday, 5th April. Janelle Norville reports. The Tourism Beach Park was conceptualized in 2010, placed on the government's priority list in 2016, and has since come into fruition. According to officials, over $2 million was invested into the project by the Taiwanese government. Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Douglas Shen, described the project as an added tourism attraction. He said that the park will become one of the landmark tourist attractions in Sufre. Hummingbird Beach is the first impression that foreign visitors have about the beauty of Sufri. To further stimulate the tourism industry in town, my government, the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, cooperate with the government of St. Lucia to start this project since year 2016. The facility consists of timber frame deck to accommodate the shops restaurant, bar, washroom, and other recreation facilities. I'm more than happy to have been told that with the completion of the project, the feedback of the community has been overwhelmingly positive and the residents of Sufre feel proud of have this wonderful park. The newly opened Sufra Beach Park boasts a restaurant, spa, outdoor showers, a smoothie bar, beach bar, pizzeria, souvenir shop, tourism information center, along with an offering of non-motorized water sports, to name a few. Parliamentary representative for Sufra, Honorable Herod Sanislas, expressed gratitude to the people and government of Taiwan. The MP also highlighted the economic contribution of the new park to Sufra. The Sufra Foundation, ladies and gentlemen, 
have employed as we begin operation of this facility 16 persons. So 16 persons have received full-time jobs from the Sufra Foundation for the operational um, aspect of this facility. And the tenants combined would be employing almost 20 persons. So this facility alone will be providing approximately 30 to 36 full-time sustainable jobs to the people of Sufra for Sufra. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, announced that there is much more to come. This is a moment of celebration. I walked around there and I felt good. I felt proud as a St. Lucia that I could be part of a facility of this nature because it brings economic benefits and there are plans for expansion. So the first official bus terminal will be in Sufre. The Sufre Beach Park located at the Hummingbird Beach was officially opened on Friday, 5th April 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The National Conservation Authority and the St. Lucia National Trust on Monday unveiled the student-painted trash bins that will be placed on beaches in the north of the island. This is the culmination of the Protecting Paradise, a beach education and action campaign that has been going on for the past few months. More from Anisia Antoine. Conservation clubs of the Masha Combined, Grosley and Corinth Secondary Schools were given a chance to design the three beach bins with a unique message and image in respect to conserving marine life. Sarah Chang is a Peace Corps attached to the National Conservation Authority. The uh, goal was to engage local students in beach education um, related to beach ecosystem science and conservation as well. So the first phase was all about educational activities. They saw movie screenings. Um, they came to VG Beach and participated in a variety of activities. Um, and all the knowledge they used in that first phase was uh, inspiration for them in the second phase. The whole objective was that students would learn about their local ecosystems, um, become engaged with them, and really take responsibility for keeping them clean. Cornelia Lubin, principal of the Masha Combined School, stated that the students have become more mindful of littering habits. We are hopeful that going forward, all of our students, teachers, janitors, cooks, everybody in our school compound, as well as within our Masha community, would become more conscious of litter and dispose of their litter in appropriate ways and so at our school we have a bin for waste um, plastics we have a bin for um, composting we have different bins for different types of garbage so that hopefully will instill in them the principle of not littering the beach bins which were sponsored by Massey stores and Harris paints will respectively be placed on the veggie beach Redway beach and Grosley beach Coretta Crooks Charles, Communications and Advocacy Officer of the St. Lucia National Trust, expressed her gratitude to the sponsors. So we're really hoping that other entities come on board because the trust has placed the bins on its website and Facebook and we realize that persons are saying what about other communities, it's not just Castries or um, Groselais. This should be an island-wide campaign so this is a trust intention to work with NCA and we're calling on other corporate entities to come on board so that we can continue to protect our oceans because we rely on it for recreational purposes, um, for jobs, the fishermen, seamers, farmers, the tour operators, and um, for even food and medicine. So it's really important that we conserve our oceans. The unveiling ceremony took place on Monday, April 8th at the VG Beach. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Do you know me? I've been forced to do this by my trafficker. I was promised a better life, but got forced into domestic servitude. I can be any age. I can be any gender, 
any ethnicity. I am. I am. I am a victim of trafficking in persons. Know the signs. See it. Report it. If you see me, please help me. Call the TIP hotline at 847 Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your segment from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Government's Sporting Infrastructure Redevelopment Program got a major boost with the sword turning ceremony for the upgrade of the Sufre Mini Stadium and the Ruby Cricket Ground on Friday, April 5th. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, described Friday's ceremony as a special moment. It is a significant point in the time of our development, especially for sports in St. Lucia. Both for the facilities and for our people. We are moving from the formulation of ideas over a year ago, just over a year ago, we said that this is going to happen. And I'm happy that today we are turning to, and it is a reality. Meanwhile, parliamentary representative for Sufred, Honorable Herod Stanislaus, was elated that the constituency was the first to be given attention under the program. Today's ceremony reflects the commitment of this government for youth and sporting development in St. Lucia. And this sports infrastructure project serves as the ideal means to harness the skills, talent, and passion of our youth. And as parliamentary representative of this lovely constituency, I am elated this morning that Sufre was the very first constituency to benefit from this national sports infrastructural project. Work on the Ruby Cricket Ground is set to commence shortly. St. Mary's College are Mass United Insurance Schools Cricket Champions for 2019, having pulled off a 71-run victory over Miku Secondary in the finals of the competition played Friday. Miku Secondary won the toss and field it in a match reduced to 40 overs due to rain. St. Mary's College eventually got 186 all-out in 35 overs, thanks mainly to knocks from Shekwain Prudent and Jehan Buda, 43 each, and Desni Gidhari, 32. Brent Edward was the most successful bowler for Miku, taking 4 for 42. Martin Estefan captured 3 for 38, and Jalen Justin, 2 for 23. In reply, Miku secondary were restricted to 115 for 9 in 40 overs. Neandi Turville, 19, and Captain Keon Gaston, 18, were their top scorers. Amari Venner was in fine form with the ball for St. Mary's, bagging 5 for 16, and Zidane Arthur lent good support with 3 for 6. Amari Venner was named player of the finals. And the Mass United 11 was named at the end of the tournament. It comprises... Aki Mogis, St. Mary's College, Efren Charles, Archipot Secondary, Keon Gaston, Marklin Estefan, Dikesh Henry, Miku Secondary, Denzel Roberts, Archipot Secondary, Amari Venner, St. Mary's College, Tyrone Theodore, Boca Secondary, Craig Elizes, Arthur Lewis Community College, Keegan Arnold, Jaden Eli Box, Leon Hess Comprehensive, Lee Solomon, Corin Secondary, and Bolton Sears, Boca Secondary. Youth Month got a formal launch on Friday with the staging of Youth Expose at Constitution Park. The event drew hundreds of spectators, lending support for the exhibition of youth talent in St. Lucia. The day included a march pass, an all-day exhibition, live performances on stage throughout the day, and other side attractions. As part of its action plan, the Youth Empowerment Project has organized a logo competition under the slogan, Enlighten, enrich, empower. Applicants must be under the age of 35 and live in the communities of New Village, Conway, Barnard Hill and Wilton's Yard. Joanne Husbands is project coordinator. She says the logo competition will be the first activity of a public awareness campaign. 
logo will serve as the official um, emblem for the youth empowerment project and we want to to introduce or to have the community design it itself the youth in the community so, so whatever is representative of empowerment to them as a youth and their community we would like to tap into their creative and graphical skills and submit um, to us at the youth empowerment project office um, well office um, at on the fourth floor the Graham Louisie building waterfront cash trees and we really wanted to we are receiving both um, hand delivered and also electronic submissions so whether they may submit their the submission graph um, graphically for a design on the computer they could submit it to um, to us on our info dot uh, yep slu at gmail.com or they could hand deliver us to us at the the address i mentioned earlier the winner of the competition will receive 500 ec dollars in a laptop Second place will receive a tablet, and third place will receive an Android mobile phone. And that's our update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucians can expect noticeable improvements and a possible repurposing of the popular William Peter Boulevard in the coming years as plans are moving afoot for a potential enhanced appearance of the area. This initiative is being spearheaded by the Ministry of Tourism through the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project. During the last week of March, a consulting team was on site at the boulevard where they were joined by Mayor of Castries, His Worship Peterson Francis. Mayor Francis expressed his expectations for the boulevard as a unique space that is free-flowing, pedestrian-friendly and encompasses a pavilion for hosting local talent and entertainment. The plans are in keeping with efforts by the government to redevelop the capital city. As part of the process, the consultants met with representatives of relevant public and private sector organizations, business operators and owners in the boulevard, including vendors and the Boulevard Taxi Association. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayol. I'm innovative. Yeah! I'm competitive! Yeah! Productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output oriented. I never stop learning. I give off my best always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Kinewa's Responsibility for Information and Government of the CGIS, CBP Television National, PIA, NTN, Kapozato Nouvelle Akweol, Kapozato Primus Hutchinson. Après trois années en espérance, Ville Soufrié, qui a célébré le commencement officiellement l'opération Facilité Beach Park, qui est située au bord de la mer devant Ville Soufrié. Plusieurs représentants du gouvernement et même public là à Wet Soufrier, tu es présent pour embrasser le grand développement de la Nous causons et puis représentatif pour Soufrier et Fosse Jacques, on est à Herald Stanislas, concernant l'accomplissement de la Nous avons ouvert projet et puis je suis très content après presque trois ans, le projet ça a ouvert, parce que le projet ça a bénéficié en charge de Soufrier, en travail, en business, et puis il a plus de tourisme de Soufrier en Eria Salah à présent. Honorable Stanislas explique ces diverses activités qui ont pris coup à l'établissement touristique. Pour l'ICA, well, c'est là c'est un côté où ils viennent pour les couillettes, côté où ils viennent pour un petit plage de la mer, ils ont fait un petit snorkel, ils ont fait un water sport, la nuit restaurant, la nuit um, um, bar, la nuit um, toilette, la nuit um, wifi, la nuit um, snacket, la nuit um, smoothie bar. En fait, tout ça, on peut cacher les gens ici. Et puis c'est un côté, côté c'est trop pour être là, il y a des gens qui ont des jeunes gens qui ont des chaises, qui ont des snorkels, qui ont des kayaks, des gens qui ont des gens. En parlant de ça, le ministre qui a des responsabilités pour faire le développement économique, pour faire des kayaks, parmi les autres responsabilités, parler de qualité de bénéfice économique qui facilite le touristique, ni pour souffrir. 
la ni a chai um, tourist ki ka vin soufouye ek la pate rel li ni a plas pou yo vini ek etabli ko yo pou yo sa bwe manje ek se ben an la me aso le nou te um, koumanse poje sa ba misye chasne kon ministre tourism misye herod se te chairman constituency branch la ta sa nou te wè poje sa se an bon poje Et c'est un gros la peine que le dernier gouvernement n'a pas continué pour gérer. Mais nous avons eu une élection. Il ne vient pas nous vivre par les bâtiments de Taïwan. Et il n'y a pas d'argent pour finir le projet. Nous avons eu un projet qui a besoin de mener un bon travail pour les gens souffrir. Parce que là, il y a plusieurs personnes qui ont opéré ce business-là. Yo ni moun ke employe e ka brezan le moun vini a chay se tourist la ki ka vini a sou beach la a brezan yo nan plas a pa di se hotel la pou vini an mize ko yo bwe manje e k depansan la jan sou fouye ki ka y benefis jan sou fouye Poje beach park sa la se pa de yo gwan po gwan de 12 milyon dola me wiche pou etable facilite a divers fason pe exap, spo e k lot facilite kon sa o li wansit li si Asi yon lot pogwam, nou ka yon prezato yon epi pli informasyon. Pe yon ka selebe mwa de jenes, pou tout mwa avri, eterman. Pou ezo sa la, Departement pou afe le jenes an kolaborasyon epi konsit nasyonal de jenes. Ja organize plezye spektak pou observasyon sa la, abe l'okasyon sa la. Selebrasyon an, komanse epi yon feste de parol, le premye pou le 4 avri. Kote le zeti diyan touve etwenman, dans l'affaire de débat à la Parlement, et qu'on y a pour parler publiquement. Le mois de jeunesse est ouvert officiellement le 5 avril, côté la tenue d'un spectacle pour jeunesse, à département de jeunesse, à collaboration et puis les volontaires de cette liste. Selon le directeur de jeunesse, le spectacle a commencé et puis un match sorti Serenity Park pour Constitution Park, côté plusieurs groupes en uniforme, comme Cadet, Scout, Croix Rouge, à parmi plusieurs les autres, ont participé. Du retour ça là, Se jenes la te touve l'okasyon a pou moutwe tout sa yo kapab pou fe ek podwi a fason biznis a kontribisyon pou a fe ekonomik a set lesi. Yo si ka y patisipe dan lot aktivite kon yon kamp pou jenes, yon servis de jenes ek yon ceremony pou onoui le jenes. Ek se kousa nou an toa bout nouvel la, jodi a mou kawe mesyo otan pou gade ek, mou kawe bawa yon invitasyon pou jenepi mou anko si die konserve la vi kote nga y prezento a lot Nouvelle à Kouyo la Présent, nous avons vu pour Nisha. Merci en pile Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are partly cloudy, becoming cloudy at times with some widely scattered showers. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean over the next few days. Weak unstable conditions in the atmosphere over the region will cause some scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 6.25 p.m. and will be low again at 11.15 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 7.32 p.m. and will be low again at 12.42 a.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.54 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.